High Grade Universal Century Full Armor Unicorn Gundam. Hey, what's up again, everybody? It's Robert184, 2Rs2Bs, Gundam Reviews. .net, and you've already seen the unbox here for the HTUC Full Armor Unicorn Gundam, which is going to be in his unicorn mode. So it's time to take a look at the parts of the actual Gundam assembled. And it truly is the Unicorn Day here in his Unicorn Mode for this Unicorn Gundam. Ah, have I said that enough? But for me, this is the first time that I put this guy together besides the regular, the Banshee, in his Unicorn Mode. And I've got to say that it's a pleasant surprise clicking it all together there because it's going to come across as just absolutely solid. I complained a little bit earlier about the lack of mobility in the legs and in the elbows. But in this case, compared to the Master Grade where you're going to have to glue it up to get it to feel any sort of stability whatsoever, this one is a pleasant surprise. In terms of looks though, on a rotating base you're going to see the backpack, but otherwise it's just going to be grey and white all over the place with that unicorn horn with the blue shoes. Is that enough for you? But I would say when you get in close and take a good look at that upper body that he's going to be looking pretty sharp. Quick look at mobility, pre-arming here as you're able to bring the leg up for a kick, but because it's on a polycap there, you'll notice that you're not going to get too much motion off to the sides. The knees are going to give you just over 90, but not much more. The ankles are going to move well forward there, and back, and side to side, alright. With the waist rotating around there, and it can move forward, and back, and stay, but it's not moving all that much, just a couple millimeters there. Same thing side to side, although it does seem to want to stay. The shoulders, of course, are going to go around like that, and come forward and back. You could have him reach across like this, so definitely not the most impressive one, as he's only going to have barely over 90 there with the actual elbows themselves. Nothing fancy down there for the forearms, and the neck is going to be moving well though, so you can have him looking off with his non-mono eye in at least a few directions. For arming him up here, you're going to have a good attachment point for the bazooka there, as it's got pegs built into it, and that's going to be applying to the full armor ones as well, if you can make it out there. But don't follow the manual blindly, because you'll be throwing out the shield attachment. Yes, you don't need it for full armor, but if you just want to make this into a regular unicorn Gundam, you will need this. Armed up now using only what you'd be getting on plates A to D in the regular 101 HTUC release. This guy's going to be looking pretty okay. The extra weapons on the back there, the ammo is good. The shield, because it has that little bit of grey, is going to be good. The fact it's off to the side though means you'd have to be posing it to sh with the arm twisted forward. Because of that grey, but you'd have to twist it forward if you wanted it to be more. You'll notice that the shield is going to be looking good because of that little bit of grey there. You'd have to rotate the arm forward if you wanted to make it more prominent. But you don't miss the bazooka on the destroy mode until you actually see it here. It's sort of cool that they did the offset so that you have to buy both kits if you want to get both of his most famous weapons. And for height comparison here, you can see that he's quite a bit taller if you just want to go for the top of the head there, compared to Shin Matsunaga's high mobility Zaku 2 there. And if you add on the unicorn horn, which is much higher than the commander's horn, he's looking pretty cool. And here he is, next to the opponent that he's racing towards at the end of episode 6. It's the Banshee Norn here, also in his unicorn mode. You'll notice that the unicorn Gundam is perhaps going to have shield envy there, and probably, I wonder if he's going to be having Banshee horn envy up there. And here he is, next to his destroy mode counterpart, and you'll notice that in terms of value, it just seems like you're getting a lot more for the just a few hundred yen more on the right there, with the exciting red psycho frame showing through, the blue is going to be a lot more. You're going to notice down there that it's actually a different color, at least in this release here. The weapons are going to be looking different as well in terms of the coloring there for the bazooka and what you're seeing in hand. And this guy has not had good ankles. He's already gone toppling over four times. Same thing that's happened with the Norn. Somewhat disappointing there. The all white V-fin or the unicorn horn is not going to be standing out compared to the yellow V-fin. And it's especially when you see the little details that are actually done up here in plastic as he wants to go toppling again, compared with the destroy mode, where that shield is definitely just going to seem like a huge step up. If you only buy one, you probably know which one to get. But if you've got them displayed on your shelf there in HDUC form, for just over 3,000 yen, you can show off both forms of the unicorn mode very easily. So that's something that's going to cost you Ichiman or 10,000 in Japanese yen if you want to do it properly in Master Grade and skip over the transformation. I think that Bandai made the right call when they split them up like this, and I think they're a cool combination. 
For ground posing here, they're going to be involving the bazooka there primarily. The shield is going to be twisted off to the back here, so you're not going to really see it there, especially with the lack of red there. The barrel, though, is looking good, and he has no problem looking down there. You'll notice, though, that he's not doing a great job of keeping flat feet. But it really is disappointing here how no matter what you try to do with these ankles, they just are not secure at all. They just want to go collapsing and even just trying to do things like get him simply to swing his body over. You've got to set it up pretty awkwardly to get him to stay. And that was the result just a second after I turned off the shoot. So with the legs practically straight, it seems like the only way that he's actually going to not collapse down onto the ground there. You can see maybe that the bazooka is barely going to be coming across the chest there. A little bit disappointing. It looked like at the beginning when you look at the shoulders that you would be able to move them forward. But it's not really going to be coming across. So even though it doesn't look bad as he's looking on here, the shield isn't going to be coming across as much as you'd like. As you'd sort of like to be putting the bazooka on top of that there. And just the bazooka is not going to be able to come across any more than this. Although you can see that it's already taking advantage of that shoulder maneuver. So he's just going to be looking okay, but yet again, that same problem. But here's a pleasant surprise, and that is that bazookas for Gundams traditionally are somewhat problematic for posing. But for this one, it's going to fit well over the shoulder, despite the fact he's only got about a 90 degree bend there with the elbow. But without detaching the manipulator, I was able to twist it in and under the armpit there. And even though it's going to be sitting horizontal and not upright as you'd like, it's still a kind of cool pose. So at least, even though he's only going to have the one big hand holding weapon there, at least they're going to have a few different options with it, even though it would have been nicer if it had gone more across the body to the left. And with ground poses holding no luck whatsoever here, while well, it's time to get him up an aerial, it would be more suiting perhaps, although would it, to have a red action base under here? I suppose if we're talking full armor, green may be the way to go. Here the bazooka's upside down, but the shield can be somewhat dynamic, and he's still going to be looking pretty cool with that all-white unicorn horn there. And unlike the Master Grade, you're not going to be able to bring the beam sabers from the forearms nicely forward, but at least you can always just pop them out and then reattach the holder. And it's unfortunate, though, that these things are going to comically slide right through the hand if you want to go and actually put them in. Remember that they do have an attachment point, but that's just to keep them attached into the forearms. These are not looking to stack up very well so far. But in practice, they will stay in the hand, although you can imagine that it's only the beveled part of the pink up there that's going to actually keep it attached in there. So he's really burning off the top of his manipulators. The fact that they go in hand, though, is a bit of a plus. And remember that you've got the choice. You've got the forearm ones, or you can pull them out of the backpack. Easier just to keep those ones in there. Just remember, don't throw out that attachment point, or you won't be able to put the shield on if you're following the full armor instructions uh, to the letter. And for high grade Universal Century kit number 101 with the Unicorn Gundam in his Unicorn mode, this is pretty much going to be as good as it gets. Bazooka, two beam sabers, and the shield here. Unless you do buy both kits, and this I'm sure was always Bandai's intention, because this guy, remember they cheaped out and didn't give you the beam sabers or the bazooka, and this guy, no beam magnum. So of course you're free to mix and match as you will if you've got them both, and it's the same thing. You've got ammo packs there for the bazooka and for the magnum, respectively. Only two beams, but I'm sure you've got some kicking around, so even though this guy's going to be lacking them normally, it's something that I'm sure you can remedy with your collection there. But it is nice to have them all here, just unfortunate that the colors there for the greys are not going to be the same. So I'm going to wrap up this part of the review with what would be my verdict for the 101 kit from the A to D plates that are back there. Remember, of course, this is the full armor one, so be careful if you don't want to be throwing out your shield there. I do like some of the things about this kit. First of all, it seemed sturdy when you put it all together. I like the little details like the popping in the gray parts down there. The blue is going to be looking good on the backpack and the feet. The fact they give you the beam sabers and the closed up shield is not exposing any clear pink on the inside is a small step up on the master grade there. The bazooka works really well actually, surprisingly well, considering the fact that the grip isn't going to be moving and the beam sabers good in hand as they do give you five manipulators and the overall looks of the all white kit, kit with that unicorn horn folded up. Actually, I think it looks pretty good. However, the downsides you may have seen already over the course of this that he's fallen over five, six times on me. I've had the same problem with the Norn in his unicorn mode and it seems to me that if Bandai's designing this guy can come across as a brick, 
because you know what? He's just going to be looking great on your shelf so he can survive on his looks. Whereas this one should be the poseable machine and they should be giving you great 180 bends. With the elbows and the knees, there's no excuse when you're not building in psycho frame to it for that. So the lack of weapon options, the fact that you can't move the bazooka across the left side of the body, and the fact that he just comes across as a little bit plain, all could be forgiven if you could at least stand up, but unless you want to get a Mariel, he's definitely going to be coming across as the weaker of the two, which is why I'm quite content that back in the day I went with this one and left this one till now. However, I'm looking at 101 right now, but ultimately what you're looking at right here is the packaging for the full armor Unicorn Gundam. So if you're like me and you went out and you bought this one back in the day because he was new and exciting and colorful, well, this is your chance to be picking up one of these 101s as part of a package deal. So I can't wait to see how he's going to be working with all of these weapons. And remember, maybe that backpack is going to be swappable with some of these other other members of the Unicorn Party. Anyway, everybody, Robert184, please let me know what you think when you picked up this kit back in the day. HGUC, especially from Unicorn, has been going back all the way to number 100 now. Anyway, would love to hear your thoughts and, of course, stick around to see it full armored and maybe more. Thanks for watching, everybody. See ya. I'll swap you a beam saber for your beam magnum. No. How about two? No. Uh, how about and my bazooka? Uh, now we're talking.